Hello, my name is Mark and welcome to Iron Organic Gardening located in Zone 6B in the state of New Jersey. And today in this raised bed that's about 20 inches tall and four feet wide and eight feet long, we're gonna plant up some beautiful little tomato plants in there. Now, a lot of people right off the bat always think they have to plant up a large tomato plant. Where I'm gonna show you in the next future videos and also by the harvesting time in this raised bed that it all depends on the weather and your situation where you are. But what you want to do when you plant up your tomato plants, you do not want any flowers on them ahead of time because you're probably most likely going to get blossom end rot or the plants are going to struggle and suffer and also not acclimate well. So inside this raised bed, we have some beautiful winter rye growing and we're going to be cutting this down and I'll show you how to do that. And also uh, in this raised bed, we have not so much soil, we have soil layered with leaf mold all the way up and I've done other videos on this even showing how deep these roots went which is about 20 inches down to hit that bottom layer of the bed these roots survived and fed that and fed the microbes over the winter and aerated the soil the reason we grow winter rye is to keep those microbes alive but also by growing all those roots in there we can also grow mycorrhizal fungi in the soil which will take this root system and increase it tenfold inside this raised bed now, with those roots that are very small, and I did, again, show them in another video. I might be repeating myself here, but this winter rye is also a tillage system and also a way of letting water go down 20 inches and also air go down 20 inches. And now we have a healthy mixture of let's say soil and leaf mold mixed together that we can grow our beautiful tomato plants in. And I'm hoping that the roots of these tomato plants can get down 20 inches too. And we're gonna see that at the end of the season when we dig things up and expose everything again and show you how well those tomato plants did. Now, also with that amazing root system that can go down that far, I will also increase the water retention inside this bed because of the free tillage of those roots. Now the roots are not gonna get in the way. They're not gonna hurt anything. Once I cut this down, those roots will actually, see these are the roots here. They're alive and full of water. Now when I cut the top off here, those roots are gonna shrink. And what it is, it's gonna allow more air and more water to go down and infiltrate that whole bed and help our tomato plants. And those tomato plant roots are also can seek out the other roots in here and then grow next to them and go down also deeper because there's a passageway open to them. It's a beautiful way how nature works and this is not something I came up with, is understanding how nature works and actually working with it instead of against it. So let's get started and I'm gonna start cutting down the winter rye and show you how I do that. So I wanna show you this first. This is on the four foot wide section of the bed. Now I came in here with a weed whacker about maybe, I'm not sure, about a month and a month and a half ago and I cut this half part down, this from this point here, I cut down. And you can see it regrew back again. And it's not pretty much the same height. I'm gonna say the part over on this side here is at least probably, let's say, uh, anywhere from eight inches to a foot taller. Now, that's one thing I wanna show you. A lot of people, and I, I, I guess I'm not teaching this the right way and I apologize, is how do you terminate the winter rye? Now, termination is determined when you want to plant things inside the bed. Now, I cut this section down if I wanted to plant, let's say, beets in there or something else either. Now, a lot of people will put lay cardboard down or a tarp on top and try to smother. And in, in the comments below in this other video, they say it works very well. Now, when I'm gonna be transplanting those plants in there, any kind of transplant that I'm growing in a four inch pot or even your cell trays or else too, now, I'm gonna give you a close up. When those seed heads have exhausted all their pollen, it has to be at least 50%. So let's take a closer look. But first I wanna show you this. This is winter rye. Some of the seeds came out, the birds got to them, knocked them off the side. And now this winter rye here is about, let's say, uh, four feet tall. And it is as tall as it is in the bed. But the bed is again, 20 inches off the ground. So this winter rye here, did an awesome job growing, but when you grow in real soil, sand, silt, and clay here, you can see the imagine how much stronger those plants can grow and work with the soil food web, with the bacteria and fungi that's in the soil. So let's look at those seed heads. 
So here we're looking at the top of the tassel of the winter rye here, and this is the seed head. And also, I don't know if you can see it, but there's also all these little prickly, let's say, pointers coming out of the seed head. This is to stop the birds from landing and actually eating this and allow it to ripen up. And this is how nature has developed it over the years. So winter rye can grow constantly again and again. Now, once it falls to the ground, that's a different story, but at least it gives it a chance ahead of time with the seed head here. It's all these little spiky things. Now, this one has passed the stage already of all this yellow pollen has coming out. Now, if I cut this, it's still kind of green, but some of these seeds will grow, let's say 50% of them. So now let's go in there. So, wow, this is prickly. So, and also very sticky. So let's grab this off here. Now inside here, now hopefully you can see this. Let me kind of zoom in and see what's going on here. Inside here is our new grain winter rye winter rye ugh. winter rye is a grain and inside here is a nice little seed it's still kind of green but this will if it falls on the ground this will mature on its own and dry out and regrow again it's not a problem because when winter rye regrows now it only grows about six to seven inches tall or six to eight inches tall and will reroot itself again and you don't have to worry about cutting it down or getting in the way the only time it gets in the way is if you direct seed something and you can actually lay a two by four on the ground and smother it out before you plant your seeds that type of thing so now with further ado let's get into the bed here and we can get down there and start cutting out all this beautiful winter rye and get some nice free straw and plant our tomato plants up so over the years, I've just used my hedge trimmer. This is about 24 inches long. It does a nice job. Just be careful your fingers, take your time. And we just go in there. It's cordless and it's uh, hooked onto a lithium battery. And I just go through the, let's say the bed really quick and cut it down. Isn't that nice that you can grow your own straw or hay, whatever, which way you want to call it. And now that's going to be a fantastic mulch and you don't have to worry about buying it. Whenever you buy straw or hay, you have a 50-50 chance of it containing herbicides and pesticides in there. And there's lots of YouTube videos out there um, with very popular channels and even smaller channels with views. And they've run into problem when they apply, let's say, hay or straw to their garden. And all of a sudden they get some deformed leaves at the top, the newer ones. And again, that's from either, most likely it's a herbicide that's been used like a roundup or something else either and basically it has uh, left in that straw or hay and is, will damage their crop in your home garden. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove all this and put it on the ground in front here so I can cut the stems down a little bit closer to the ground and so I'll come right back after I do that.
Now we have our nice little pile of straw that we're going to use as mulch later on. And also too, we're going to go back and trim this again right down to the ground surface and get a little bit more straw and make it easier for us to plant up eight tomato plants. So I'm all done and completed, cutting it down with just a hedge trimmer there. Now, all this here is truly a no-till system. The roots are the tillage. The roots, again, like I said in another video, went down 20 inches. And all this is beautiful. And it can get air down 20 inches and get water down 20 inches. And hopefully our tomato roots of our transplants here can go down 20 inches too and spread out. So we're going to space it every like two feet apart. We're going to do a row here of tomato plants two feet apart and also here. So let me re-clarify that. I said two feet apart. They're going to be two feet apart from this row to this row here. Now they're only in about, let's say, a foot from the edge, uh, give or take. So we have a foot that can go that way and a foot that can go that way and vice versa. And there's like, let's say, it's about a foot and a half apart this way, give or take. Now that root system has plenty of space to not compete against other roots, but I, actually it's not bad for them to all to grow together because that mycorrhizal fungi helps out these tomato plants but in this back row here I did an indeterminate called big beef and those are going to grow very tall and hopefully and I haven't decided on the trellis system yet what I'm going to be using and also these here is sun gold it's a nice yellow uh, cherry tomato now what I've noticed over the years and maybe you've noticed it too whenever you grow cherry tomatoes the foliage is not as dense so I'm hoping that some sunlight still can get through to the back side our sun travels from let's say over here east to west and then in the in the afternoon at least this half of the bed and here might get some sun but at least the other half of the bed behind so I developed a good rotation system of the sun so I have at least six hours of sunlight from six o'clock in the morning to noontime here and from noontime on the back of the bed gets here sunlight also so let's start with our first one here again what we're going to do is just take off some of these lower leaves my plant is not that very big here but it's fine again no flowers on it you really don't want any flowers ahead of time and we're just going to dig into this nice soft soil and go down about let's say uh the plant here so i'm going to say four inches in the pot and then we want another three inches so about seven inches deep we're going to go and let's pull this core out here and now i want to show you this unbelievable this is what i'm going to be planting into oops hopefully the camera will readjust much better and again this is what we have here nice and moist again all that carbon is taken that's what when you see rich soil like that people always compliment me on it and i thank you for watching and saying nice things about my channel and i really appreciate it but what this is is the carbon out of the atmosphere going back into the soil and into this other structure here and that's what the dark richness is what you want to do is take carbon out of the atmosphere and feed your soil that's gardening organic gardening 101 and it's just beautiful and it holds moisture so let's get our plant in there if you wish to and you're not confident enough of knowing about what to do you can always add worm castings to your soil or to that hole. That's what I have in this box here. This is my own worm castings. And now I just put a little in the bottom and a little on the top of the plant. And again, just to be on the safe side, if you have it, there's no extra work to it. And that can go directly into that hole that we're gonna be planting our uh, transplant into. And it's your choice. All this should be healthy. But we have this beautiful worm castings. I only just need a handful. I'm going to sprinkle around the top here. Take my tomato plant out like so. Make sure the roots are not bound. I'm just going to open them up a little bit on top and a little on the bottom. And then we're going to put that right down to the bottom of the hole here. Like I said, about seven inches. And now I'm going to have to break this apart here a little bit. 
and just place that around that tomato plant and just you don't push it in too heavily or something like that again you're going to water afterwards and it's going to take those air pockets out now what you can do which is beautiful and let me get some of that straw now this is the straw we harvested and i just took it and i bent it and i'll just do it again like so and i just make a nice little comfortable ring around it like a bird's nest and now no splashing of soil beautiful mulch this will turn brown and i'll show you that what i did on another tomato plants next to a trellis so here's a trellis that i installed after i cut the winter ride down also too and i planted my tomato plant which is that nice little tiny little green thing down there beautiful right there now this winter rye was cut back about let's say a week ago and you can see that i put that beautiful uh, tomato plant around that winter rye and it has some nice mulch and i don't have to do anything all summer long there's going to be a couple little weeds pop up here and there i just cut them down it's all fine but this is the same technique i'm using in that raised bed i'm planting up all eight tomato plants having two rows here four in each and now the only thing you have to do is bend some of that winter rye and uh, cover that soil up around each plant i just want to show you before i do that is because once i do that you're going to be <laughs> barely able to see a tomato plant like we have here but all is good and again too there might be a couple weeds that grow up inside this bed, give or take, but the best thing is it's not gonna be a lot because I'm not disturbing the soil except where the uh, transplants are. So, and also I have plenty of mulch. I got more mulch on the, on the side over here that I'm gonna put in there and it's gonna do a fantastic job suppressing all those beautiful weeds and everything is gonna be fine. Now, either I'm gonna put a cattle panel in there or stakes or maybe some bamboo. Uh, haven't figured out which I'm gonna do yet. But again, the soil is nice and soft, so whatever I put in there, I might even attach a two by four on each end and do some kind of trellis in between, because since it's a nice wood bed, I can attach the two by fours and go up, let's say maybe even six or seven feet tall. Um, haven't, like again, haven't decided. Let me know what you do and also too if you're in zone 6b and you planted tomato plants now this is about a month after normally i plant tomato plants now i've held off last year and this year and i've noticed and that's my question to you if you planted your tomato plants around may 15th to may 20th how are they doing if you're in zone 6b are they growing are they still staying the same because we've had really crazy weather and also too i didn't want to bring them out too early, too early because again may was such a dry month until the end of may and now we're getting nothing but rain and hopefully it's going to stop uh, being a problem for me now what the reason i say that is because now i don't have to worry about early blight as much so from just a farmer to you in your garden here, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, leave me in the comments and I will do my best to answer them as quick as possible. Just being extremely busy lately, our weather is breaking, so I gotta get in the field and plant some more seeds up. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, please share and like. Enjoy your day and happy gardening.